first off, we need to create a control. Okay, so to create a controller for your character, you need to go to Create, NURBS Curves, NURBS Primitives, and we'll create a circle. It's going to turn up in Origin 00. zero. I'm going to just scale this up so we can all see it. I'm going to hold V to snap it to my wrist joint, and I will hold J, sorry, E to rotate, and J to rotate it incrementally. I'm happy with that position. I'm going to scale it down. It's a little bit too large. That's not too bad. I'm going to give it a name. This is going to be my left hand control, like that. And with every control that you create, you need to um, freeze the transforms. So we go modify, freeze transforms. That places everything in your channel box to zero. All the translate scales and rotates to zero. Why do we do that? Because Later on, as we start animating, there's times when you want to come back to the original T-pose. Um, you can just zero it all out and come straight back. Okay. Alternatively, once it's been skinned, you can always go skeleton, um, sorry, skin, go to bind pose. Okay, guys, um, let's move on. So what we want to do here, well, first off, we want to use this left-hand control to drive these little... Um, finger joints. So to do that, first we need to create some little um, some controls for our inside the wrist control. Okay, So we can just uh, select the wrist control each time and we'll see a bunch of controls turn up in our um, channel box. So to do that we need to go edit, add attribute. Okay guys here we are inside the um, add attributes so let's Add our first attribute. We will call it uh, fist because we're going to clench the fingers into a fist. We'll give it, a, it's going to be a float. We will give it a negative value of minus 10, positive value of 10, and a default value of 0. Click add and it'll pop up inside your channel box under the hand control as fist. Okay, now I could create a whole bunch more if I wanted to for each finger. Um, but uh, for the purpose of this exercise, we'll leave it at that. There we go. There's our fist. This will be our control. And we select our controller to bring it up. Okay, so now we need to um, drive this. So to do that, we need to create a set-driven key. Make sure you're in the animation uh, menu. And then you go key. Set-driven key. Set. Brings up this set-driven key window. I'll just place that so we've got a decent bit of real estate here to work with. Okay, So we want to load a driver. In this instance our, our control here is our driver, so I'll go load driven. And we want to select fist, that's important. And our driven is of course going to be all of our little fingers, so finger joints. So I'm going to select each one by holding shift. Select them all like that, go from the finger forwards, the, the, the fingertip, got them all, I'll go load driven, now select all of them, and we're interested, I believe it's in the rotate of the Z, you can check this by clicking on one and actually rotating it, and seeing up in the channel box, that's rotate Z, I'm going to undo that, and so I do now know it's rotate Z, and I want to ensure that, first off, that my fist is going to be in the um, 10, minus 10. So I'm going to put this one actually to 10. And then I will hit key. Right, now I need to select all of these again. And we're going to do, we're going to create the fist. By selecting them like this allows us to rotate them evenly, like this. That'll do. And now we want to set... Oh, actually, sorry, did that wrong. I need to select this first and turn this to minus 10. Hit Enter. Now I put them into the positions. So I select those again. Boom, 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 boom. The order of operation is really important with this one. Now I select this shape, go 
a little bit more actually, why not? And I'll hit key. Now if I've done this correctly, I should be able to select my control and I change fist, click the fist attribute and middle mouse button, they should open right up and they do. Fantastic. Works great. Next up, what I want to do is generate an IK for the elbow. So we want the elbow to move and we want this control to move with it. At the moment that controls not um, attached. So to do that, first I'm going to create an IK. So I go back to my rigging, go skeleton, IK handle. I like to go to the options here and just ensure that rotate plane sidebar is on, not single chain. Rotate plane, great. And then you will select the shoulder, select the wrist, and you can test it straight away and it's moving in the right direction. Looks like it is to me. Fantastic. I'll just undo that. That's correct. I could probably call this left um, left elbow. Okay. Or left arm, sorry. Okay, handle. Makes more sense to me. Now, what we want to do here is we want we don't want to be able to grab the IK handle every single time. You can see it here in our channel box. Uh, sorry, in our outliner. We want to be able to grab this control that'll drive it. So in essence, we need to parent our IK handle to our control. So if I just middle mouse drag and drop it in, um, which is another form of parenting, then it works. See that? And what about the wrist rotation? Do we get rotation here? No, we don't. So we're not getting any rotation on the wrist there. So you might want to grab the handle, shift select, say, the wrist, and go constrain. Try and orient constraint. By the way, make sure your offsets are turned on. Now I'll just test that. What do we get? I get a nice orientation and I also get nice movement. Okay, and I can probably just type zero in all these and it comes back. Fantastic. So it's working. Okay, now one more thing we need to generate for this, um, for the arm, is what's called a pole vector for the elbow. Pole vectors are uh, not difficult. We, it's a constraint, by the way, pole vector. So, to be able to do the uh, create the pole vector, first we need to create a um, a locator. So go create locator. Locator is just a point in space. I'm going to scale it up a little bit. Okay, I'm going to snap it to the elbow. So I hold V, snap to the middle of the elbow, drag it straight out. Here we go, and I'm even going to modify and freeze its transforms. And I'll score this left elbow. Um, what do we call this? Left elbow um, control? Why not? Left elbow control. So if we select the left elbow control, and then we have to select the IK handle. So where's my IK? It's inside here. Grab this one. Uh, control, select, sorry, and then select that, constrain, and it'll be pole vector. And there we go. You should get that little line pop out. So now, if I move this, you'll see my elbow is actually moving as well. So I'll move this one, I'll grab that elbow control, and you'll notice the elbow moves up and down. Okay. Move that one back to my zero. Okay, and you'll do exactly the same for the other side. 